Hi everyone, this is Deb Tim, a Canadian girl. Today we are going to look at green water algae or the dreaded algae bloom. This is episode number nine in my algae series, so please stay tuned. This is my 75 gallon mixed African cichlid aquarium. Have you ever been greeted by your aquarium water having a lovely green tinge about it? This is the first indication of a pending algae bloom. Green water is sometimes referred to as pea soup. The culprit that is causing this green tinge to your water is a free-floating single-cell algae. It develops at such a rapid rate that in hours it can turn your aquarium water green. These planktonic algae are actually microscopic floating plants capable of photosynthesis. Algae contains chlorophyll, which is also responsible for the green color of plants. Chlorophyll is what allows plants and algae to absorb light and turn it into energy which they need to flourish. Oxygen is being produced through this process while your lights are on. However, at night when your lights are off, the algae will use up the oxygen from the tank as it's unable to create this energy without a light source. If the bloom is serious enough, the depletion of oxygen can eventually suffocate your fish. While you're dealing with an algae bloom, it's vital that you have extra oxygenation in your tank to combat this problem. If your tank water is cloudy for anywhere from 10 to 14 days, you will likely end up dealing with an algae bloom or green water as some call it. The cause of green water is a combination of things, high nitrates, phosphate, some ammonia, disturbing the substrate, leftover foods and high amounts of waste all contribute to the development of green water algae. A spike in any of the aforementioned components will give algae the opportunity to flourish. Adding too many fish at once when your system is not prepared to deal with the extra bio load is one cause. Overfeeding is another culprit that assists in algae growth. Even if the food you're feeding is completely consumed, you could still be overfeeding. Think of it this way. Take Thanksgiving dinner. How many of us eat more than we really need? Well, it's the same basic principle with our fish. You may not have uneaten spoiling food in your aquarium, but it's simple cause and effect. What goes in must come out. Spoiling food and fish waste are the two most common reasons for algae blooms. These are two things algae thrive on. Algae is a scavenger and can quickly change the nutrients it thrives on, making it difficult to remove. Water changes will not get rid of this algae, although water changes will definitely help in reducing the amount in your aquarium. Also, while you are dealing with green water, limit your feeding. I do the feed fast. This is a process of feeding one day and fasting one day. It is virtually impossible to starve a fish. Limiting the waste buildup in your aquarium will go a long way in providing a healthy environment for your fish. Your fish should never be totally satisfied. If they're not eager to eat, then chances are they are overfed. To eliminate green water algae, there are a few options. One is blackout. This method is simply cutting off any light source whatsoever to the aquarium. Cover the tank completely with towels or plastic garbage bags preventing any light to get in. You will need to keep your aquarium covered for four full days. A water change must be done before you begin and again after the four-day period.
The water will be polluted with dead algae. It's important to monitor your ammonia during this time. The second option is adding a diatome filter or water polisher to remove the algae. I have a polisher in each of my aquariums at all times. I will be sharing that on another video coming up soon. You will need to check your filter and change it often as it removes the algae. It can become clogged quickly. The third method is to add a UV sterilizer to your system. It will take care of free-floating algae microscopic parasites and unwanted bacteria. The UV sterilizers are very expensive and do not remove the dead algae or decaying materials from your aquarium, so it's best to use an inline sterilizer. If you can afford one, it's a good way to go, but again, they're expensive and may not be a good choice for many people. Option four would be to add live Daphnia to your tank. Although this is not always successful, as your fish may consume them before they have completed the job of eating the algae, the best way for this to work is to separate your fish and let the Daphnia do their job first. The fifth and final option is adding a chemical algicide. In using algicide, you should remove your fish. It may not kill them, but it can cause issues with their gill function and overall well-being. I'm personally not in favor of chemicals of any form. Now, of these five options, I would go with the polisher myself. I've done that in the past and have found great success in using them. The most important part of providing a healthy environment for your fish is having a good maintenance routine in place. Weekly water changes are a must. 50% minimum in a non-planted tank is crucial. You will need to decide what works best for you. We all know there are many variations from tank to tank and home to home. So everything that I share is in a general sense and may slightly differ from place to place. So until next time, this is Deb Tim signing out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope your tanks are free and clear of algae and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.